Is expensive wine always better? Is a question that I'm often asked and the simple answer is no. There's a correlation between the price of a wine and its quality, but it gets weaker and weaker the more expensive the wine gets. A $20 bottle is usually significantly more expensive than a $2 bottle of wine. Yes, they do exist in some markets. Most winemakers want to make the best wine possible, but if you're not able to sell your product above $2, your hands are tied. Talent can only compensate for so much and even the most talented winemaker cannot make Grand Cru quality wine from Vin de France quality grapes. On the other side of the spectrum, even the most high-end viticulture and winemaking techniques stop contributing to the quality of the wine at some point. You can only drive down yields so much and the price of new barriques is also capped. This is why a $200 bottle of wine doesn't have to be that much better than that $20 bottle of wine. In some cases it can even be worse. The price of a super expensive bottle of wine isn't just determined by the cost but also by the demand and in some cases marketing strategies. This means means for us that if we close our eyes and disconnect ourselves from the brand in front of us, we might actually make beautiful discoveries from undiscovered regions or producers. Following that thought, Leon has selected six wines for me to taste blind. They are all made from the same grape variety or varieties and they likely come from different places and one of them is a very expensive while the other ones are more affordable. So let's see whether I can identify the grape variety and hopefully we'll find some beautiful discoveries along the way. All right, let's start with wine number one and it's definitely red. Look at that color. That's really dark. It's like opaque. Okay, I realize that this is kind of difficult for you to see as I'm wearing my black shirt, but if I would have had to taste some white ones, this would have been easier for you. But here, look at this. This is super dark. So dark color doesn't give away all that much. There are some grape varieties that this likely isn't. I mean, Pinot Noir, Trollinger, or probably also Grenache don't really have this dark color. So, so but there's a long list of other grape varieties that this could be. So let's give this a little smell. And this tastes, oh, it smells pretty good. I mean, it smells of like blackberries, cassis. There's a little bit of plum character coming through as well. So it's quite complex, quite dark fruit characters that I can sense here. There's maybe a little bit of oak as well but it's pretty well integrated. So it's a complex, rich and intense red wine. On the palate, this actually shows quite a lot of acidity and freshness. It actually feels quite lively. The tannins are present, but they are not super grippy. It's quite a lot of liveliness there. So what could this be? I mean, this could be quite a few different things, but it feels like there's a Bordeaux varietal here in, in that wine. So Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Malbec, Carmenere, one, one of those grape varieties, they are all kind of bringing dark fruit character, concentration. Um, the tannins actually don't feel that pronounced. So for me, this doesn't shout Cabernet Sauvignon, but it could also be a blend of all those five varietals or some other ones in smaller proportions. So I'm not ready to commit myself to one of those grape varieties, but I'm going to rate this wine 92 points. I think it's really beautiful, juicy, rich. The tannins are present, the acidity is there, and there's bright fruit character. So it's quite a beautiful red. So let's move on to wine number two. Again, really dark very dark. Okay, this is different in character. There's a little bit more red fruit here, so it's not all black. There's also a little bit of red currant character coming through, a little bit more cherry flavors. So it feels like it's probably from a cooler region than the previous one. The texture seems to confirm that the tans are grippy. There's good freshness there, quite lively and vibrant. Quite a complete Red. I'm still not 100% sure what this could be, but it feels more like Cabernet than like, well, it could be Cabernet Franc as well, but didn't we already do that? I don't really remember, but yeah, it, it could be Cabernet Franc, it could be Cabernet Sauvignon, it could be Merlot, maybe Malbec and Carmenere are also options, but I, I don't think there's uh, 
there's enough Malbec or Carmenere in the world to really get together six really good wines from different places. Um, hmm, tricky. Due to the intense tannins, the grip, the acidity and freshness there, I'd actually think that this is probably Cabernet Sauvignon, just because it just has more grip, a little bit more concentration, especially the previous one than what you normally get from Cabernet Franc. This should be from a cooler climate, so not, not really a warm growing region. Could be from somewhere like South Africa, in a cooler side, Chile. It could be from New Zealand, maybe even Australia, uh, from, from a cooler area. So that's tricky. But for me, this has a little bit of green mintiness to it, a little bit of green bell pepper, a little bit of mintiness, red fruit character. So I think I'm going to say Chile here. Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile. There's probably other grape varieties in the blend, but mainly Cabernet. And I'm going to rate this 91 points. So wine number three. Again, red, but kind of brown in color. This is quite, quite brownish. Let me get out my, my thing here. Do you see that? It's, it's brown. There's a little bit of garnet here. And it also smells quite a bit more mature. So here we have some prunes, dried fruit characters. It's a little bit more spicy. So there's quite a bit more tertiary flavors, flavors that develop during the maturation in bottle. So this certainly feels aged. So this feels like a more classic expression of Cabernet Sauvignon in a Bordeaux blend. It smells of cassis but also of spice so you have like those cigar box flavors coming through the dried fruit character on the palate it's actually quite juicy and rich the tans are mellow and round and the finish is really long so this is delicious it's not the most impressive bordeaux style wine that i've tasted but it's but it's well made from the way the wine presents itself in the glass and the taste and the smell i'd say it's probably 15 years old, so maybe the 2009 vintage. And I would place this in Bordeaux. I'd, I'd say this is maybe a Saint-Julien, a really well-made wine, not the top, top quality, but, but pretty good. So I'm going to rate this 92 points, delicious stuff. This feels like a really well-made Bordeaux style wine. And now let's taste wine number four. Four is not the darkest wine in the tasting. I mean, it shows some like, brownish notes, but it's it's pretty purple. The color in red wine is a good indication for its age. The older a red wine gets, the browner it gets. So this is actually showing some signs of aging, but not as much as the previous one. It doesn't always mean that a browner wine is always older. It also depends on other factors like the grape variety, the way the wine was made and so on and so forth. And obviously also how it was matured. But this looks less old than the previous wine, but older than the ones before that. This smells quite delicious. It has like these dark berry fruit characters, like blackberries and cassis notes. There's a little bit of spice, cigar box, cedar wood, pencil shavings. There's quite a lot going on here. On the palate, it's intense. So here you can really feel the grip, the tannins coming from Cabernet Sauvignon, really coat your mouth and grip on your gums, but in a, in a nice way. There's concentration on the mid palate and a fresh and vibrant finish. You know, Cabernet on its own in most regions, even in Bordeaux, doesn't really bring the power and concentration on the palate. That's why they usually blend in some Merlot to give the wine a little bit more body. And this is what this feels like. So it feels like a Bordeaux blend, a blend between Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and maybe Cabernet Franc, Malbec, and Petit Verdot as well. Blending those grape varieties just makes the experience much more enjoyable. Some people think that only single varietal wines can be great. But that's obviously not true in Bordeaux. It really helps that they blend in different elements in order to produce a really complete wine. Even though this shows some signs of aging, it is not at all at its end. I think this can age for another 10, 15 years easily. And I'm going to rate this 95 points, a delicious wine. And I'm also going to say that this is from Bordeaux. I think for me, it feels a bit like a Saint-Julien. Could be a Pouillac as well, but 
yeah, I, I just think this is probably a really good quality Saint Julien. And given that I put the previous wine in Saint Julien as well, there's probably one one of them probably isn't. But anyways, I'm I'm going to say this is Saint Julien, a really great wine. So let's move on to wine number five. <laughs> oh. No. You know, this happens very rarely in those tastings, but this is definitely corked. It's just super smelly. It smells like damp cardboard, and I don't think that I'm really going to get anything out of this wine. Yeah, this sucks. I hope this is not the expensive wine, because that would be a lot of money down the drain, but this is just terrible. The essence of cork. That's... That's what this smells like. So last but not least, we have wine number six. Interesting. So wine number six is actually quite a bit paler than the previous wines. It shows some signs of browning, but it's definitely more see-through. So did Leon sneak in a pirate, a wine made from a different grape variety? Let's find out. Even though the color is light, the flavor and texture just aren't. The flavor is quite concentrated and rich. There's creme de cassis flavors, blackberry jam notes. On the palate, it's actually rich and concentrated. They are tannins, but they are really well polished. And it finishes long, but really concentrated. So this also feels like there's 14 15% alcohol, richness, concentration, density, but well made. Given that I said that the grape variety of those wines is probably Cabernet Sauvignon, I, I'll go straight to Napa. I mean, this just has the body and richness that you get in Napa from Cabernet Sauvignon. The great thing about Napa is that you really don't need to blend in other varietals. They do blend in other varietals, but they can usually use much more Cabernet because it just tends to bring in this fruit flavor, but also the body, the middle middle palate element that usually has to be contributed by Merlot and other regions comes straight from Cabernet when you are in Napa. So a really complete, juicy, rich and bold Bread. I'm going to rate this 94 points and yeah, I think it's it's delicious. It's time for the big reveal. I must say I'm not 100% confident when it comes to the origin of those wines, but I'm pretty sure that Cabernet is in the mix. And well, before I embarrass myself even further, let's just let's just look what's inside the bag. So wine number one, I thought was delicious. I'm I didn't actually say what it was, so maybe I'll just give it another sniff. Interesting. I mean, this actually is also quite bold and rich. Appears to be from a warmer climate. This could also be Napa. It could also be somewhere like Argentina or a warm place in South Africa or Australia. It also could be like a super Tuscan blend quite a bold and rich red. So I'm just going to say Tuscany. It's quite it's quite warm in the finish. So there's a little bit of alcohol there. But yeah, I'm going to say super Tuscan. But let's have a look. Shall we? All right, the first fail of the tasting. It is from Argentina, from Mendoza. So I think I said Argentina. I mean, it definitely had the concentration and richness. I don't actually know what the blend is here, but I, it says on the back label, 54% Cabernet Sauvignon, 22 Malbec, 18 Cabernet Franc, and 6 Petit Verdot. So this is a Cabernet-based wine, a pretty rich and bold style, but, but yeah, good stuff. So let's move on to wine number two. I think I said this is from Chile, and I did like it. It was a little bit lighter and more red-fruited, but good stuff. And it is. It is from Chile. I don't know this wine. I think it's called Betic. Vino de Viñedo Los Compadres de Omaule. 2022. Pretty, pretty, pretty solid. Quite juicy, elegant, fresh. Good stuff. So let's move on to the next. And I thought this was great. A little bit more aged. And I put this into Saint Julien in Bordeaux. Just like the next one. So let's find out. Ah, oh, no way. I was so wrong here. So this is 
aged. It's the 2016 Mount Eden Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon from the Santa Cruz Mountains. Delicious wine, not so bold and rich, but more more refined, really good. So now I'm getting nervous. Let's see whether I was actually right here. I thought this was from Bordeaux, just like this one. But anyways, saint Julien, also a little bit more aged. Ooh, not too bad. So this is the 2016 Pichon Baron from Pauillac, but it's actually right on the border to saint Julien. So I, I don't feel too bad about that. Great wine, probably the most expensive one. I'll reveal the prices in a minute, but but yeah, really good stuff. So this one came straight from Corktown. I mean, I have no idea what, what this was because it was so, so corked. Let's have a look. Oh, 2016 Troncois La Lalonde from Saint-Estephe. So this was also from Bordeaux, but yeah, I mean, I wasn't able to tell. Uh, I think this is just really badly corked. A shame. So now wine number six. I actually thought it was from Napa, but given that this one is also from California, the third wine, um, I'm guessing that it's probably not. Let's 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 see. Bulgari. Okay, so this is the Poggio al Tesoro Il Seggio from Bulgari, 2020. Delicious wine, really juicy, bold and rich, but not from Napa. So this was a very nice lineup of Cabernet-based blends. The Pichon Baron was clearly the most expensive one at 175 euros. The Mount Eden did cost 100 euros. And the cheapest wine was the Bulgari at 25 euros, which is a great bargain. The other three were all around 30 euros. So there was quite a big difference here in terms of price, not necessarily in terms of quality. Interestingly, the most expensive wine and the cheapest wine were actually the highest scoring wines, which goes to show that you don't have to spend a lot of money in order to get great wine into your glass. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, What is your favorite bargain Cabernet blend? Let me know down below in the comments. But whatever you do, stay thirsty.